Doesn't it fascinate you that the weather information is always up to date on your phone screen? Or that you can turn your house lights on or off from your phone? Or even better by asking Alexa to do it? All this is possible by using APIs. Welcome to the short video series which will introduce you to APIs. My name is Valentin Despa and by the end of it you should have a good understanding of what APIs are and have gained some practical experience in using some simple APIs. Next time you are caught in a discussion about APIs, you will know what the others are talking about and you will be able to join in. For software developers, APIs are what most of them live and breathe on a day-to-day -day basis. But for the rest, this is just a buzzword. When talking about APIs, we are typically referring to web APIs which work over the internet. To better understand how things work, we first need to take a step back and quickly learn how the internet works as this is also relevant for APIs. When you want to search for a flight, you open a browser and use a service like Google Flights, for example. Say you want to fly from New York to Bangkok. You enter the details and select your desired flight dates and click on search flights. When you do that, you will send a request to the Google Flight server asking for that information. In simple terms, the server is a computer that has some data typically stored in a database. The server will handle the requests coming from your browser, which contains all your inputs like your flight dates, from which city you are flying and so on. And knowing all these details, the server searches the database for the information requested and sends back a response. The entire process happens faster than you can blink. We call this flow a client-server interaction where the client is your browser and the server is the Google Flights computer. The protocol that makes this communication possible is called HTTP and is essentially a set of rules that facilitate the communication between any client or server connected to the internet. Your browser has the capability of transforming your clicks and keyboard strokes into HTTP messages that the server will understand. Furthermore, the browser can understand the response from the server which most of the time will be formatted using HTML and show you a friendly page. Now imagine you need to send the cheapest flight you could find to someone traveling with you. You will need to extract some information like the price, the airline, flight number, departure time, airport, and so on, and send them over as a text message from your phone. As you can probably tell, the overall design of the results page is not needed to convey the most relevant information. Applications that run on your phone or any other device connected to the internet work similarly in the sense that they are interested only in pure raw data. They don't care about the font size, the color or other design elements. So if an application would need this data, sending back a web page formatted as HTML will make this process very complicated. Unfortunately, computers have difficulty understanding the data if it is formatted using HTML, as this markup language is only intended for browsers. This is one of the problems that APIs try to solve. An API is an application that runs on the server and enables other applications to get data from the server in an easy to use format. Instead of returning data formatted as HTML, an API returns the data in a format that the computer can easily understand, typically in XML or JSON. So APIs are all about the machine-to-machine -machine communication. We refer to the applications that call an API clients. To be more specific, a better name is API clients. So the response from the Google Flights API could look something like this. Even if you're not familiar with this format, you can still read and understand the content. This is a widely used format called JSON, which stands for JavaScript Object Notation. It is essentially a way to represent information so that any computer or programming language can understand and work with the data. For example, using APIs allows different clients to display the same information, but using a different design. The infrastructure used by APIs is the same as when requesting a regular web page. Most APIs rely on HTTP to send and retrieve messages, and quite often web servers will also offer an API to access the data. A server will return HTML if the response is intended for a browser, or JSON if the recipient is an API client. 
JSON can also be used when the API client needs to send some data to the server. The details you have manually entered in the search form can be represented in JSON like this. To make this message exchange work, both the client and the server need to agree on how the data is structured and represented. For example, if the client is not sending the airport code in the format expected, the server may not understand the request and send back an error message. Which data is available, how it is formatted, and how to send the requests are documented by the API provider in the API documentation or in a formal API specification. Most apps on your phone will use an API to send and retrieve data. Even modern websites will use APIs behind the scenes to dynamically update content on the screen without you doing anything. Alexa will also use an API to answer your questions or tell you jokes. This is why if you don't connect it to your Wi-Fi, the device is essentially useless. The power is in the APIs. So APIs are the lifeblood of most modern applications. Put your phone in flight mode and see which apps can still provide some useful functionality. Probably not that many. I hope that this introduction has been useful to get a better idea of what APIs are. In the next video, I will show you how easy it can be to get data from an API.